Good morning, Cardinals. Happy Friday to everyone. Hope and pray you had a blessed evening and a blessed week. A big thank you, Cardinals, to another amazing week here at St. Charles because of all your efforts to be Christ-like and to be a people of mercy and understanding and kindness and patience and politeness. Uh, it just makes life so much easier here at St. Charles. So big thank you, Cardinals. Big thank you, teachers, for the amazing job that you're doing. Please continue to uh, please know that you're very much appreciated and to please continue to uh, contribute to the kingdom and to continue to answer the call of your ministry and your vocation. The, the yes, as Mother, Mary would, as Mother Mary gave an example for all of us, to say yes to Christ and to our vocation and our calling. So thank you everyone for a blessed week. A couple of announcements before we begin our daily prayer. A happy early birthday going out to Lily Coster. Happy early birthday. She celebrates her birthday tomorrow. As you see her throughout the day, please wish her a happy, happy birthday. And I only know this just because it's the same exact day. A special um, happy anniversary going out to the Yanonis. Miss Lisa in the front office and Mr. Yanoni, who helps us out so much here at St. Charles. They are definitely a tremendous blessing, as many of us probably feel that way about them. And so, a happy anniversary going out to Mrs. Yanoni and Mr. Yanoni uh, on celebrating, I believe it's their 23rd anniversary. Congratulations to the both of you. Um, also, a special thank you for the gift and blessing of my wife. The reason why I know the Yanonis anniversary is because my wife and I were married on the same day, same year as the Yanonis. In two different places, of course, two different churches, but what a coincidence, right? So, happy anniversary, my love, and thank you so much for the blessing and the honor of being able to have you as my spouse. And um, just gratitude, lots of gratitude and thanksgiving for the gift of, for all of our spouses and all of those that, in our family and loved ones that we have. Amen. Yesterday, Father Leo talked about the relics that were going to be on display today at St. Charles Church. And so, brothers and sisters, you know, so grateful that he introduced that. So grateful that we, that we have the tremendous blessing of being able to be present and venerate those holy relics, right? They are holy items. And so, brothers and sisters, this may be, if not the one, maybe the only time in your lifetime that you'll have this kind of an opportunity. So I hope and pray, Cardinals, that you t recognize the seriousness. One, I liked how Father walked in talking about the Holy Mass. We meant, many times we make reference to the fact that we're going to Mass, but it is a Holy Mass. It is a Holy Time. So we should treat it in that light. Well, today we have the opportunity between 10.30, 11-ish, 11 11-ish, depending on when the relics get here, uh, to be able to enjoy and venerate. What does that mean? It just means to appreciate and adore and, and give gratitude to God for the gift of holy people. But Cardinals, the one primary message that I wanted to get across to all of you is that you and I, as God's chosen people, have many names. Child of God, disciple of Christ. But the one I like, Cardinals, is a living saint. So as much as you're gonna have the opportunity to be present in front of a blessed, um, a person that's being considered for sainthood, at a very young age by the mindful and also another bishop who is a saint that's who you'll have the opportunity to venerate their relics tomorrow you and i have the name of living saint now cardinals here's what you also need to understand is that all of these things all of these given names that you and i have it's our responsibility to say yes to those names as well so today cardinals are you going to choose to be a child of god you always are, but are you truly going to answer the call and move out on living the gospel? You're called to be a disciple of Christ. Are you going to say yes to that today? To move out and be a blessing to all those you come in contact with and to spread the gospel by way of sharing your light, sharing your smile, sharing your kindness, sharing your love, all those kinds of things. And then a living saint. Are we going to say yes to answering the call of saying, yes, Lord, I love this opportunity to be considered a living saint. May I do everything I can to live up to that calling and to be a blessing and to be holy. Brothers and sisters, all these things have already been given to us. But one of the best gifts we've ever been given is this thing called free will. That is our choice, our ability to make conscientious decisions every moment of every single day. Well, I pray, Cardinals, that Either you've come to recognize or that you hopefully see that 
I make every answer to say yes to those callings each and every single day. I'd like to believe that most times I get them fairly right. I don't know about the Living Saint one, that's a tall order, but I'm still trying. And ultimately, brothers and sisters, that's what God asks of us, that we try, try our best. Because one of the fav my favorite sayings that I've learned over the course of my life is, try your best, let God take care of the rest. Amen. And so one of the things that's really profound and awesome with today's opportunity at the Relics is for you to see a teenager, a current, recent, not a current, but a recent teenager, right? 15 years old, but honored and served God Jesus in the Spirit with all his being every moment that he was alive and now finds himself in line to be considered beatified for sainthood. So brothers and sisters the question is is how many of our cardinals are finding themselves in that light? How many of us are choosing to be holy and to honor God and, and give God our life or give Jesus all of who we are each and every single day to continue his will, his work? I'm trying. I pray that you're doing the same, Cardinals. With that, Cardinals, I know Mr. Allison's gonna do some additional information on pieces of what a relic is and some, maybe some, a little bit of background on maybe some of the saints if possible. Um, but I'd like to go ahead and turn now to our reading for today. So if we could all take a moment to put ourselves in God's presence by way of prayer, breathe in the Holy Spirit, put on our Christ, and let us listen to today's word. Today is the feast day of the Spanish priest, St. Peter Claver, who is the patron of African missions and of interracial justice because of his hard work caring for slaves in Colombia. As a young man studying philosophy, St. Peter was encouraged to serve as a missionary and he listened. He arrived in Cantagena, one of two ports where African slaves were to be sold, came to be sold in South America. St. Peter cared for them tried to ease their suffering and brought them the love of Jesus. Today, we're he today we hear about Lydia, who listened closely to the apostles and turned her heart towards Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostle. We set sail for Traus and took a straight course to Samothrace, and from there to Philippi. We remained in this city for some days, on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we were supposed there, we were supposed there was a pr place of prayer, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tirithia and a dealer in, pu in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she, said, when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, beautiful reading today about being baptized into Christ. And we're all Christ's. I mean, Christ is in all of us. But when we baptize, we're being committed in a more deeper way. And brothers and sisters, I, I hope and pray that you and I continue to answer the call of what it means to be committed to Christ. It's in our thoughts, and it's in our words, and it's in our actions. Plain and simple, Cardinals. Thank you so much for all your efforts. Thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your academic and spiritual journey here. So as a staff, and as your honored and humbled principal, thank you, Cardinals. Thank you, for being, thank you for being the light of Christ. Thank you for spreading joy and giving us joy. And thank you for the opportunity to be part of your journey. And thank you for allowing us to be as much of a blessing to you as you are to us. Hope and pray you have a wonderful day and weekend, Cardinals. God bless. If you could please take a moment now to stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America, and God bless our world.
student, prays daily, knows and understands our faith, demonstrates a spirit of service. A lifelong learner, thinks critically, develops skills and knowledge, and participates in the arts. A good person of moral character, accepts accountability for our action, respects school, peers, and adults, and acts as a good steward of the earth. Relics. A relic is a fragment of a body or physical possession of a canonized saint. These relics help us grow closer to God. There's different types of relics. The first type of relic is a body part of a saint. It could be their bones, their blood, or even their flesh. The second type are possessions that the saint owned. So it could be a shirt that they wore or a shoe. It could even be something they used, like a pen. Now we venerate these. Veneration is an act of honor or respect, not worship. And we venerate these relics dating back to the beginning of the church. In fact, one of the early relics found was pieces of Jesus' cross. The most famous relic is the Shroud of Turin which is a burial cloth that many believe depicts the face of Jesus Christ. Other relics include the crown of thorns. Now these relics from time to time travel the world. And if you're lucky enough, you get to witness and pray with these relics in your presence. So why do we value what saints owned or wore? Well, we need to remember that saints are not just ordinary holy figures. They teach us how to respond to Jesus' gift on the cross. And like all humans, saints suffered just as we do. But through their sufferings and despite their circumstances, they made God the center of their lives and encouraged others to do the same. If we look to scripture, we can find that God heals through physical touch and objects. Many times Jesus would touch the sick and they would be healed. Another example, the mud that Jesus spread on a blind man's eyes caused him to see again. That's why we consume the Eucharist. The flesh and blood that Jesus sacrificed for us on the cross heals us. It cleanses our souls and renews our spiritual relationship with God. When we touch the relic of a saint, the object itself isn't healing. Rather, it's God's intercession through that object that performs the blessing. The reason why we value the possessions of saints above other holy figures and leaders is because of their canonization. We believe as Catholics that these saints are in heaven because of the miracles that they performed on earth that cannot be des described or explained by science. Touching a fragment of their body to our jewelry or our rosary beads bring us to our third type of relic. Anything that touches a first or second class relic becomes a relic itself. When you bring jewelry or rosary beads and touch that to the relics we have, they themselves become a relic and they connect our values with a heavenly presence. Think about it. When someone you love passes on, why do you hold on to their possessions? It's to help you feel closer to them, right? Well, when you own a relic of a saint, you have a reminder that that saint is always with you. If you convert your necklace, your bracelet, a ring, something you have into a third class relic, you will constantly remember to pray and follow the saint's values in times of tribulation. Hold on to your relic tightly and you might be surprised what graces God shares with you. God bless.